Question number 21 says, running on the same constant rate, six identical machines can produce a total of 270 bottles per minute. Six machines can produce 270 70 bottles per minute. And the question is asking, at this rate, how many bottles could 10 such machines produce in 10, in, no, in four minutes? So they're saying 10 machines, four minutes. Well, we're going to have to convert this one minute to a four minute and also try to figure out how uh, many bottles one machine can produce in one minute. We know six machines can do produce 270. So that's just a simple division problem. Four goes into 27, 24, 35. So what we found out here is that one machine can produce 45 bottles in one minute. So how many can 10 machines produce? Well, if one machine can produce 45, 10 machines can produce 450 in one minute. And they're saying, what about in four minutes? Well, that's simple. We just multiply this number by four, and we will get, let's see, 1,800 bottles in four minutes. And let's see, that's one of the answer choices. Yes. That is answer choice B. Okay, number 22. Ah, they have a sort of a number line here. It's like this. And then they have 0 here, negative 1, negative 2, a 1, and a 2. And then they have a B, C right here, D like that, and E right here. And the question says, of the five coordinates associated with the points above, A, B, C, D, E, which has the greatest absolute value? And the absolute value, quick recap, it just means that whatever is inside uh, these lines, say that the number is 1, that equals 1. If it's a negative number, let's say it's negative 1, the absolute value of that number is still 1. So whenever something's inside these two lines on the side of it, it just means that you get rid of the negative. So um, basically they're asking of all these points here, which one has the highest uh, absolute value? And the answer should be A, because if you take the absolute value of negative 2, that's going to get you, that's going to be 2. And uh, nothing else here is, is actually higher than 2 or negative 2. If you look at E, it's slightly less than negative 2, or it's slightly less than 2. If you look at B, you know, it's between negative 1 and negative 2. D is also between 1 and 2, and C is just 0. So C is actually the, it would be the lowest number. So let's see, number 2, that is, what is number 2? Number 2 is A. Is that A? Yes, answer A. Number 23 says, if n is a prime number greater than 3, and then n is prime and greater than 3, what is the remainder when n squared is divided by 12? Let's pick and choose some numbers. 5 is a prime that's greater than 3, so is 7. Let's try out these numbers. So if you, if you take 5 and you square it, and then you divide by 12, you get... 25 over 12, and the remainder is going to be 1, because take 12, 25, 2, 24, you get 1. So remainder is 1. Let's try it out with 7. 7 squared over 12, that would be 49 over 12. Uh, if you multiply this by 4, you get 48. Again, remainder 1. So remainder 1 appears to be the answer, and that is... B. All right, let's look at number 24. Number 24 says 1 over 1 plus a third 
minus 1 over 1 plus 1 half equals 1. Okay, so we know that 1 here is actually, you know what, let me, let me use a different color. Okay, so we know that 1 is the same as 3 over 3, and 1 is also the same as 2 over 2. So if you add these up on the bottom, what you get is 4 over 3 minus 1 over 3 over 2. What you can do here is actually just flip the two sides. You know, when, you, when, when something is divided by 1, that's the same as, you know, flipping the, the denominator and the numerator, um, you know, completely. So what this actually becomes is 3 over 4 minus 2 over 3. Then you just take the, find the, you know, greatest or least common denominator, and that would be 12. Cross multiply, 3 times 3 is 9 minus 8, because you take 2 and 4. And you get 1 over 12. 1 over 12. That is answer, answer choice D. All right, and I will continue this in the next video.